independent watchmaking has really blown up over the past few years. One of the brands that has really helped that trajectory is Ming. Ming makes some really simplistic watches that are very complicated at the same time. Of course, there are people who hate the brand and there are people who love the brand for many different reasons. And we'll get to that in just a moment during the review. However, today we do have a Ming to show you guys. It is the 1709 in blue and I'm very excited about it. Let's flip the camera and take a look at Ming. So I've been trying to get a Ming on my channel for quite some time. And finally, I have one to show you. This is the 1709 in blue, kind of a controversial watch. However, this was lent into the channel by Belmont Watches. I went to buy a watch from them uh, on eBay and that watch actually sold out in the process of me trying to buy it. And unfortunately, I missed out on that watch. That was a Ming also, it was their dive watch, the H41. They had an incredible, incredible price. That's why I uh, tried to buy it, however, it did sell out. They did lend me this watch to review through our conversation. I just told them that, you know, I review watches and it was really nice. They offered to lend me a watch. So you can see here, it comes in a beautiful leather pouch. It comes in an outer box. There's a little canvas pouch as well. There's also a note from the brand. You get three years of warranty, all of that good stuff. Now, this is the 1709 blue dial. There's a few reasons why I really love the brand Ming. First off, Ming himself, Ming Thien, is a watch collector. He's a photographer. And he said some pretty interesting things about watch collecting in general. If you ever listen to any of his interviews, I think he's a really interesting guy. One of the things that he said is that he's always chasing the next special watch. And I do think that the watches that he makes are pretty special. So obviously, they go for a very simple design, but at the same time, they make it very complicated. One of the things I don't like about Ming right off the bat is that a lot of their watches don't have a second hand, but that is part of the design, the sort of clean look of all Ming. And their hands are obviously really well thought out. They're extremely legible. So you're going to always know the time when you look at this watch. But there's a lot of layers to their design, even though, again, they keep it extremely simple. So the dial itself has two layers. There's an outer track, which is really the minute track, but the minute track is really sitting on the bottom of the sapphire crystal, and that is Superluminova X1. It's laser etched into the bottom of the sapphire crystal, which has AR coating on both sides, and essentially that's your minute track. So those are where the indices are printed onto the actual sapphire. That sort of sits above that ring that is basically the, I guess, minute track on the dial itself. Below that, you have another sort of circular area, the center portion of the dial that is textured and has a beautiful texture that when you look very closely, you could see it from far away. It just looks sort of matte, slightly textured. And when you look closer, you could see that it is a very nice texture. I'll throw obviously video up so you could see what I'm saying. Now, what they have done, and I, I, a lot of people call them a micro brand, they are not, in my opinion, they are an independent brand. They have made a design language through their case shape and obviously the design of their watches in general over a very short period of time. And that has resonated with collectors. They also have a really bad way of selling their watches, which I have to say I do find very annoying. But if you do ever get your hands on one of these watches, and I have seen many of them in the wild, I've seen tourbillons, I've seen a million different versions of these watches in the wild. So at collector's events and stuff like that, every single one has one thing in common. They're good looking, they're well designed, uh, they all look like a Ming. You'll notice them from across the room because you'll know that is a Ming design because of the way the case is shaped, the way the dial looks. That is hard to do for a lot of brands. And again, this is an original design. This is a very original design. They did something completely different and they actually did it well. And that's why it sort of resonates with collectors. It is something special. 
That's why I want to have a Ming in my collection. Uh, I really love independent brands. I think Ming is really awesome. So uh, definitely something that I will own in the future. Now, this was a controversial watch because of a few different reasons. What they used inside this watch, and it was modified by Schwartz and Eat, which is a watch brand and a manufacturer who make uh, their own movements. They also modify movements for other brands like Ming. And what they did here is they used a GMT movement. It's the Salita SW330 uh, without the GMT function. So you do get a jumping hour hand when you put it into the second position of the crown. So I think it only jumps forward, that's right. Um, and basically what that does is it makes it a pretty good travel watch. So if you are traveling to a different time zone, you can jump the watch very easily uh, for hour increments. That's basically it. That was the reason why they did it. And then you pull it out to the second position and there you go. Now, some of these watches, this one does not, had a problem when you actually line up the watch at midnight at 12 o'clock. And really, if you line it up at any of the hour positions, if you put it on the hour, there would be a misalignment. Basically, that's because they used a GMT movement and you're using the GMT hand to tell the time. That's the problem. And uh, I think they corrected it for a lot of people. A lot of people don't care about it because it really doesn't affect the watch in any way. It works perfectly fine. So some people are a little mad about it. Some people weren't. Uh, I don't think it's that big of a deal, but there you go. Now these watches are 38 millimeters. So that's the other thing about their watches. They all are in that 38, 39 millimeter range. So this is 37.9 millimeters, 38 millimeters, basically spot on. You have very short lugs on these watches. So 43.7 millimeters. So for small wrists, these are gonna wear really well. 10.3 millimeters, you get a big crown for the size of the watch. 5.8 millimeters, which is actually really big for uh, the size of this watch. Now, originally these were priced in that $1,800 range, I think. And I was saying that they have a really annoying way of ordering their watches, and that's because the way that you order their watches is you have to wake up at whatever time, depending on the city that you're in, and then uh, put your credit card information. And sometimes it doesn't accept the credit card information because they are located in, I, be, I think it's Malaysia is, is actually where they're based. These watches are obviously made in Switzerland, but when you do that, your credit card might reject it, which is what happened with me when I tried to buy my first Ming. They even told me, I actually called my credit card company. They still rejected it. Um, and then I called back and by the time they accepted the charge, the hit sold out. So it's really annoying to buy one. And that's why I say brands like MBNF with the uh, Mad One, where they do a lottery, it's just way better. You just go in, put your name and you're able to get the watch. If you're not, if you are, that's it. Prices on Ming's have been dropping. So I have noticed that the prices on some of these watches haven't been doing as well as they did uh, when they were first sort of released. So they have been softening a little bit, but not that much. But still at the same time, I think this is like a $3,500 watch, let's call it or $3,000 watch somewhere in that range, um, which is of course a lot more than it originally sold for. So very quickly, let me throw it on my wrist. And then we're gonna do a loom shot because the loom on this watch is phenomenal. You have loomed hands that gets X1 Super Luminova, and then you have this sapphire crystal which is etched and filled with Super Luminova as well. So uh, it's going to look pretty cool. It's laser etched and filled with Super Luminova. So very quickly, today on my wrist, I have on my Vacheron Overseas. I have it on a rubber strap today. Um, watch that I wore basically all weekend. And it has been pretty hot in New York and rainy, so it's a really great watch to wear. Um, so the Ming, and this, on the strap that it comes on, so it's a leather line strap. These are made by Jean Rochot, which is a brand that make sort of high-end straps. They have a store here in New York City, um, and their straps are very expensive. And when you go there, if you want to get a custom-made strap, they. They need like three, four months to make a strap. It's pretty incredible, but they do make high quality products. And this is an Alcantara strap that this comes on with leather lining. It looks like suede. It feels like Alcantara, beautiful strap. Really nice buckle on here as well, uh, which is sort of 
cut out on the sides. I'll do close-ups of it so you can see what I'm talking about. I have a seven and a half inch wrist, 38 millimeter watch, wears really nice on my wrist. Um, it doesn't wear bigger than 38 millimeters. I think it wears spot on at 38 millimeters. Wears like a 38, 37 because of the really short lug width. Uh, you do get curved ends on the strap, but it really doesn't mold to the case in any way. So it's actually really nice, very comfortable. Anyway, quickly, let's do a loom shot and then wrap up the video. Obviously, I am very impressed with this watch and I do plan on getting a Ming in my collection, hopefully in the very near future. So special watch, pretty special loom. As you can see, the hands are fully loomed and then you have that sort of ring around the sapphire crystal that is fully loomed. Every indice is fully loomed that is etched into the bottom of the sapphire crystal, double AR coating. Tell me what you guys think down in the comments below. What do you think of Ming in general? The brand in general? What do you think of what they're doing? You could say a lot of things about Ming, or a lot of things about the way you have to order them and how annoying it is. But the design of these watches is good. If you don't like the design, you still have to respect that they are doing something very different. They are not following the crowd. They're not making an homage. They're not borrowing from other brands. They're doing something completely different and they're sticking with it. So they're doing their own thing 100%. I like that. Tell me what you guys think down in the comments below. Uh, I really wanna hear from you guys. I, I like when a brand takes chances and I think they take a lot of chances. Even using the Salita uh, GMT movement without the actual hour hand and using the GMT hand, a big, bold move by a small brand could kill them. You know what I mean? A lot of people went nuts over these because, in, in a bad way, because of the misalignments that they experienced. So. I mean, taking a chance like that is a big deal. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit that bell icon. It is super helpful for the channel. I very much appreciate it. Please follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is watchchrisblog, all one word. I have some links in the description. Those links are to Amazon. If you click those links and buy anything, it helps support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything extra. However, I very much appreciate it. Anyway, thank you for logging on. I'll catch you guys in the next video.